everybody. Welcome. We're going to get started. Uh, hopefully we'll get some stragglers so they can come on in. This is uh, Debugging by Example. Uh, this is a talk about how I found a bug in a module and I fixed it and what steps I took. So you can all join me on that wonderful journey. Uh, this is about the file entity module. Uh, step number one in debugging is always, well, you have to find a bug. And so for a client, we were using the file entity module to allow people to uh, give attribution to images that they upload. What we wanted to do was uh, every time you upload a file, you get a little WYSIWYG field, you can say this was taken by some cool guy and here's his website. Um, the file entity module essentially lets you say every time you have an image, I want these fields to be available to edit. Or if it's a video, then you have these fields, et cetera, et cetera. You have different editing, different ways you can edit this stuff. It's basically just fieldable files. Um, it extends the core file entity stuff. So there's no, you don't have to pick between the two. You can have the best of everything. We thought it was a great step. However, uh, we found a bug. And this is uh, a movie of the bug. So like I said, uh, we edit an image. There's a WYSIWYG field. We want to be able to link to somebody's website. So you click the link button and you put in a URL and then nothing happens. You click save, see a little spinner, nothing works. You have to X out of it. You come back and all your content is gone. So uh, yeah, this was an issue. Um, pretty much ruins the entire idea. But now what? Find a bug, now what? Um, any ideas? What would you do first? Go to the issue queue and scream at the module maintainer. Okay. <laughs> Good. Console. Console. Anything else? Check to see if an existing issue. Existing issue. All of those are great. Download the newest dev version and see if it still exists on a fresh install. <laughs> there you go. That's what I would do first. Most people, they automatically just download the stable release. Happens with Drush. Happens with Composer. You can check the dev version because like this example, the difference is four years and 78 commits between the stable and the dev version. Uh, this was the WYSIWYG module, and actually, if you downloaded the stable version and the most recent version of CK Editor, it wouldn't work at all. Like, you had to use the dev version. So, um, this is, it's normal for you to use stable, you should use stable, but generally, the dev versions aren't broken, they're just, not maybe as well tested, or they haven't been around as long. So feel free, use the dev versions, it could be fixed, and then you don't have to do anything, but my talk would be over. So, for this example, that did not apply to me. Uh, the next option, a lot of people said, was we'll search the issue queue, right? Maybe it's not fixed, but somebody else has found your problem. Um, lots of things you could do in the issue queue is you can search by uh, the status, definitely make sure that you're searching for closed issues. Maybe somebody had the same issue and there were instructions and they said, oh, well, this isn't a bug in our module, it's not a bug in somebody else's, and they closed the issue. If you do a search by default, it only gives you open issues, you're going to miss stuff. Uh, also, you can search by uh, module version. Make sure you're also searching for like the full 7.x and not just like a specific release. For your first searches, you want to get as much information as possible. Use lots of keywords. This is you know, searching 101. Go crazy, make up stuff, and you'll find something. Or, like me, because the talk would be over, you also would not have found something. Uh, if you find an issue, there are two possibilities. A, there's a patch, or B, there's not a patch. If there's a patch, apply the patch. See if it fixes your issue. If it does, awesome. That's not what we're talking about here. So there's a link to the documentation for like how to apply patches, all that kind of good stuff. There's other talks about that stuff. But for us, we're more interested in stuff that's broken and hasn't been fixed yet. So uh, the other thing is there is no issue, or you found an issue but it doesn't have a patch. This is the fun stuff. 
this is why we're all developers, something's broken, we get to fix it. It's happy, happy, joy, joy, <laughs> right? It makes me excited, okay. Uh, but before you do that, I would implore you to please create an issue. Uh, a lot of people don't do this, even if they don't know how to fix it, they'll just say, oh, the file entity is broken, I guess we're not using that module. And then nobody knows that it's a problem. So please, at the very least, create an issue. Uh, it would be awesome if you had like really nice reproducible steps, a limited subset of modules. There's a whole link here on how to create good issues. I understand people are busy. If all you do is create an issue that says this is broken with a screenshot, that's better than nothing. So you created an issue. Uh, this was mine. Uh, the inline edit form breaks with CK editor. This is against the file entity module as we talked about. Um, I have steps to reproduce and part of that is install Drupal, install file entity. So that's the minimum installable set of modules you need. It's just Drupal and file entity. Uh, specific steps on how to reproduce the bug and then also, because I found this kind of difficult to explain, I went ahead and uploaded the video that we watched earlier to the issue directly <laughs> so that you can get a clear understanding that developers can see this is what's happening without trying to have to guess. Um, and then, what? <laughs> you can wait for somebody else to fix it. Uh, we're professionals. We can fix this ourselves. So, now we're finally into debugging stuff. Unfortunately, a lot of people quit here. They get to lose out. We're going to continue. This is the meat of the talk. It's what you all came for. <coughs> what do we do next? You found a bug. We're going to debug it. Where do you go? As of yesterday, there are almost a million lines of code in Drupal 8, 8.4. There's almost 15,000 files, seven different languages. Where is this bug? Check the module, DPM everything. Lots, 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 <laughs> lots of stuff to check. So uh, it can be front end or back end. Is it JavaScript bug? Is it a PHP bug? Uh, code or content, right? Like, is is it broken because one of your content editors just forgot to leave a closing div tag, right? That content, but it was still break your website. Or is it something in code? Is it a problem with Drupal core? Is it a problem with a contrib module? All this stuff, mm, it's hard to tell. Some things are easy, right? If you get a PHP fatal error, it's a PHP bug. Um, if you're uh, checking the like recent log messages, most of that stuff is gonna be PHP related bugs. Uh, JavaScript would be stuff like um, uh, buttons that don't work, like we saw in here, you click save and nothing happens. Other front end stuff would be styling issues, uh, like overlapping text, wrong errors, JavaScript warnings, and stuff like that in the console. So some things you can clearly demarcate, right? You get an error in JavaScript, it's JavaScript. You get an error in PHP, it's PHP. So let's uh, reevaluate. We looked at what the bug was in terms of what we wanted to do and what we were expecting to do. Now let's look at it in terms of like technical, what's actually happening. So when you click edit, you get a pop-up. And then when you click add to link, you get another <coughs> pop-up maybe, or it's the same pop-up that like overwrites the previous contents of the pop-up, or it's a new pop-up, but it closes the old pop-up. Yeah, it, it's JavaScripty, right? It's not, anytime your content on the page changes and you don't get a page refresh, you're dealing with JavaScript. So all this kind of stuff points me to front-end JavaScript things. So now let's check um, the uh, console. So one of the biggest tools, debugging tools, is the uh, web developer tools. It's in every browser. Um, it gives you a whole bunch of stuff, um, inspecting the DOM, inspecting network requests. You can do performance tuning, um, a ton, a ton, ton more stuff. This specifically is the console tab that lets you like write just raw JavaScript and execute raw JavaScript. It also tells you if there have been any JavaScript errors. And as you can see, 
there's no red text, so we don't have any errors. So while we're producing the bug with the console tab open, we didn't see any JavaScript errors. So it's not a syntax error, it's something you could potentially search easily and find. Uh, so it's not JavaScript, but maybe it's PHP. So let's check the recent log messages. We also have nothing. Nothing in the recent log messages. So uh, we still don't know. Front end or back end? Mm, still not sure. So let's uh, learn by going front end back. Essentially, all CMSs just generate HTML and then deliver it to the browser. So if you want to figure out where in the code is this stuff broken, you can look at the HTML, look for things that can point you in the right direction, right? If you see something in the HTML that you know could be generated by code, then you could potentially search for that in the code and find it. So uh, let's look at an example of that. Here is my uh, application, and uh, this is the same thing we had before. If we try to do a link, uh, nothing happens. It's just broken. So what I'm interested in is uh, this pop-up here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the uh, DOM inspector tab. And everything that you do in the right-hand side has a correlation to what happens in real time on the left-hand side. So we see as we hover over things, it's highlighting stuff. We can also go the reverse direction. If you click the arrow, you can hover over something on the page and then it will highlight something in the DOM. So let's make this a little bigger. So stuff that I'm looking, stuff that I'm interested in, like how do I find where this might exist? Um, this, if we hover over this uh, div, it highlights the uh, pop-up. The next parent to that doesn't highlight the pop-up. So this is probably like the outermost parent for this specific kind of element on the page. And I'm looking at, this has a class UI-Dialog, UI-Widget, and all this other stuff, you know, role dialog. That's like a container for a thing, right? If you were developing something, you might say, well, this is a dialog. It kind of demarcates that this part of the code, this HTML, is one feature. And it, since it has a specific class name, UI Dialog, <coughs> it specifically denotes this is a feature, but it's generic enough that you would expect every dialog to have a class UI Dialog. So this is the kind of keyword thing I'm looking for in HTML so I can go back and search in code. So I'm going to look at UI Dialog. I'm going to do a code search for that. Uh, this is PHP Storm. It has a lot of really cool debugging and helps you write PHP code and all that stuff. The only thing we're using it here is for code searching. You said it's PHP Storm? Correct. Yeah. But, I, I mean, every single text editor can search your code. So, whatever you have, this applies. And all I want to do is search my entire Drupal website for UI-Dialog because that's the class that I saw that was matching this feature that is broken. Uh, and this is the results I get. Uh, it's a lot of stuff, but one thing that kind of jumps out at me immediately is jQuery UI. Yeah, there's another one down here, it's a little cut off. The jQuery UI is a like third party library. Uh, it has a whole bunch of stuff like dialogues, accordions, um, sliders, all kinds of stuff. But it's a third party library. And it's only responsible for like displaying a dialogue, not managing dialogues. You know, Drupal would be responsible for saying, please open the dialogue or close one. jQuery UI is only responsible for showing it when it's asked to. And also, since it's a third-party library, that I would not expect that one to be broken. 
right? Otherwise, there would be a issue in Drupal Core somewhere saying, hey, every dialogue in Drupal Core is broken. It's clearly not, because we can open dialogues. We can open the file entity, edit thing, and if all you did was change the alt text and hit save, it would work. So it's not the dialogues themselves. It's not jQuery UI that itself is broken. It must be something else. So for this search, we saw a bunch of jQuery UI, a lot of theme stuff, uh, but there is, down here, a lot of Drupal JavaScript, right? It's not part of the library, it's not in the theme, but it's JavaScript and it's part of Drupal. So that is interesting. We should take a look at what that stuff is. Uh, PHP Storm lets you like preview what the searches are for. So for uh, every file that was found, it will tell you like what line that was. If we just quickly inspect what this code is doing, we can see that it's just like managing stuff that already exists, right? Get the closest thing, find the parents, find, push, you know, edit the CSS, find. I don't see anything like create a dialogue, destroy a dialogue, you know, initialize it, whatever. All that kind of stuff where you're making it and deleting it. This is just like cleanup stuff. So for me, this I wouldn't look any further than this in this code because it's not what I expect the errors are, right? Because the error I get is I click a button and I get a new dialog and then it's broken. Uh, so that search wasn't necessarily useful, but that's not the only thing we have to do. So let's try again, we'll do some more searching. Uh, if we dig a little deeper into this dialog, we see uh, it has another like UI dialog title bar and a button pane, but this one here is, has a div ID equals Drupal dash modal. Now, the fact that it has an ID called Drupal, I'm sure means it's not part of the jQuery UI library, right? It must obviously be part of Drupal. Uh, and it's Drupal dash modal. Modals is like another word for pop-ups. So, this is the very next thing that is interesting to me. If I search for Drupal-modal, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna find some stuff in Drupal, and I'm still not sure, you know, we're still in this phase of where's the bug? Is it JavaScript or PHP? I'm not sure, but I need more background information. So I like this Drupal-modal. Uh, it's an ID, which means it can only appear once on the page. It's got the word Drupal in it. It's about modals, our bugs with modals. I like this a lot. So let's go back to our code searching. And we're gonna do the exact same thing except we're gonna search for Drupal-modal. Uh, and this is great. One thing that's odd right off the bat is this is all PHP code. In our previous search, we got a whole bunch of JavaScript stuff. In this one, we got a whole bunch of PHP. Odd, but fine. If you look at your PHP file names though, we see like closed dialog command. Uh, close modal dialog, open modal dialog. This is that open close stuff that I was kind of looking for before. <clears throat> this is now, I, I like this a lot. Oh, I see this, okay, this is where I want to go. Um, we also see that there is some JavaScript down at the bottom, dialog.ajax.js, and it has the um, jQuery, it's doing a jQuery selector for the ID and it's like getting the length, but it's also doing that where it's creating a element with the ID Drupal-modal. So this one in the JavaScript that has line 29 on it, that looks like it's what it's actually creating the element that we saw previously in the inspector. So I'm gonna go immediately to that and just look at the code. We open up the whole code base and we just want to uh, peruse over it. Um, this is a Drupal behavior. It's got an attach function like everything else. Uh, here on uh, line 25, we see it checks to see if a Drupal model exists already. Uh, and if it doesn't, then it will create one and append it to the body. And what also is interesting to me in these two lines is that they have hard-coded the Drupal dash model and the HTML element. So Drupal as a CMS 
is explicitly designed to be very dynamic. Right, users can enter in whatever content they want and it needs to show up that way. So when you see something like this that's hard-coded and it's not in a test and it's not in some other library, they explicitly decided this needs to be hard-coded for some reason. That's kind of a red flag for me. Mm -hmm. Not because something's wrong, it's just so different than what the CMS is designed to do. It doesn't mean anything to me right now but I'm going to file that away in the back of my head and remember that and be like, you know what? That's odd. It might come in handy. We'll keep that in mind. Reading through the rest of this code, you know, I'm not an expert in how modal dialogues work in Drupal 8. Uh, I don't really know how this works explicitly, but I can read the code and I don't see anything obviously wrong, right? If you just kind of read through and figure out what it's doing. There's not a logic error. There's not any syntax errors. It doesn't look just plain broken to me. Um, so the only thing is, hey, there's some hard-coded stuff here. The, uh, this is the exact same code we're looking at, but I changed one thing. I unhid the comments. and. I did that for a specific reason, because a lot of people ignore the comments. I find them very useful, especially for this specific example. So the comment here says, non-modal dialogues are responsible for creating their own elements, since there can be multiple non-modal dialogues at a time. Developers don't generally write useless comments. I mean, you know, let's trust them a little bit. This is Drupal core, right? So let's look, read this one more time. There can be multiple non-modal dialogues at a time. That implies that there can only be one modal dialogue at a time. And if we think back to what the bug was, you had the file entity edit thing that came up, and then you hit the CK editor link, and the file entity one went away, and the CK editor link showed up. Well, if they're both modals, and there can only be one modal at one time, then that makes sense, right? Now, after reading this comment, now I'm thinking that must be the bug, right? They must both be modals. You can only have one modal up one at a time. Seems obvious. Uh, what you um, do later, so this is later in the file. I kept reading this file down further. This is the Drupal Ajax commands uh, for open dialogue. And uh, there's nothing specifically wrong here either, but um, let's see. Get to my notes. Uh, we're reading. We're just reading down further in the file. Uh, this is the thing that says, "Hey, this is an open dialog command." And the thing that's interesting here is that it's an AJAX command, and we're in a file called Drupal.ajax.js, and all the other stuff we've seen previously has been talking about AJAX stuff. So. Even though my assumption is that it's the mobile thing that's an issue, I'm seeing a lot of Ajax stuff. Let's just double check it's not like a Ajax bug, which is kind of a combination of PHP and JavaScript. Maybe there's an issue in the communication somewhere and that's why it's broken. Um, so uh, essentially the uh, web developer tools, which you would open again, it also has a network tab and it tells you every network request that the browser makes in order to render or do anything with this page. So we can filter by JavaScript requests, the XHR, and if we keep that open while we do the bug, we'll see that we get an AJAX request for the inline edit form, we get an AJAX request for the basic HTML, and, um, and that's it. They're, they're all 200 
status okay messages. If you like inspect the contents, there's nothing broken. So this just confirms that it's not Ajax bug related. Uh, it probably definitely is the mobile thing. So if we do a search for Uh, the so previously we were searching all of Drupal for these keywords. Now we know that the bug is probably in these like open modal and closed modal dialog commands. So what we now want to do is search specifically in the file entity module for these commands. So again, I'm just doing code search, but I'm looking at specifically the file entity module. And here uh, we see that in filecontroller.php, there's a closed modal and open modal. And at this point, it's very clear, I'm practically positive, that the issue is modals only happen once. The file entity is using a modal, and CK is using a modal, and they conflict. So uh, I'm sure I know what the problem is. The next step is let's try and fix it, right? Um, so we look at first, what is the open modal uh, dialog doing? Like what's the code in it? Uh, it's very short, right? Most of that is, that entire page is comments. Um, there's only three, really there's only two lines of code in this entire class. And all it does is it calls the parent with a uh, hard-coded Drupal-modal, that thing that we remembered from last time, is here, and it's hard-coded again. And this is calling the parent, which is open dialog command. So you've got open dialog command, open modal dialog command, open modal dialog command. It always passes the exact same ID every time you open the modal. So that means, in my thinking, that if you pass the open dialog command a different ID, then you should be able to open more than one at one time. So we can go now to the file entity code. Uh, this is where it's creating the new open modal dialog command. This is the thing that opens the uh, file entity edit window. And we are going to change this from instead of new open modal dialog command, we can change it to new open dialog command. And if we pass in Drupal dash modal, this should now be equivalent. It's exactly what it was before, just we're using a dialog command instead of a modal command. And if we were to test that in a browser, we would see, yes, nothing has changed. That doesn't help us because the status quo is broken, right? But we know this is what we want. So now what we want to do is use a different ID every time. My pick was to use the file ID. It's guaranteed to be unique for every file that somebody uploads. It's going to be unique on every node. You know, if you have multiple fields, it should, in theory, always generate a different ID. And it should, in theory, fix our problem because every dialog command now has a different ID. Uh, is that the case? Let's find out. So I get prompted. You want me to kick you off? Yeah, yeah. It's cool. I can't prepare. So we click edit, and we type in some text, because we want to link it to something, put in a URL, and it makes a link, and we can click save, and if we click edit again, all our text is there. So let's fix the issue, it's awesome, it's fun. Now what? You could just commit that in your code, right? You now have a patch module forever. Congratulations. Uh, your websites work. Your job is done. But you're leaving all your other 
awesome, cool, grateful, <laughs> friendly Drupal developers in the cold. So if you had created an issue in the beginning, like you're supposed to, because you're good people, then you have a fix for that issue, which means you should make a patch for it. Uh, there are good instructions on Drupal.org for creating and submitting patches. Uh, I won't go too much into it. There's lots of other tools. If you're going to do patches, like you need good uh, coding standards, and especially for core, you need to follow a lot of rules. For contrib, but this could be a little more lax. Mm -hmm. Lots of stuff on Drupal.org on how to do that specifically. But the most important part is please don't just like patch and run. If you do, that's better than not at all. So upload the patch no matter what, that would be awesome. But follow up on the issue as needed, right? The developer might come back and say, hey, this doesn't exactly follow our coding standards, or hey, we need a test, or I don't understand your steps weren't very good for reproducing. If you could follow those and respond, that would be super helpful. And also to be patient. Uh, here's the patch file for our bug. It's very short. Essentially, all we changed was the uh, open modal dialog command to an open dialog command. And then we uploaded the issue, and uh, it's available, and it's patched. Like I said, though, be patient. I opened this issue in August 2016, and it's still open. So there has been activity. People have seen it. It will eventually get fixed. But for now, it's still open, and that's fine. You know, it's, yeah. it's just the way it is. So someone else has made a, a patch for it that improved on your change or something? Uh, in, his, in his opinion, yes. In my opinion, no. Mm -hmm. Oh, so that's, that's why it's taken a long time. And probably. Okay. Yeah. Well, he doesn't like file ID or something? Uh, yeah, you can go read it. I, I can read it. Yeah, yeah it's open. It's, it's available. Open now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It, but if you, if you like my patch, you can mark it as reviewed and tested by the community. All right. It'll be awesome. Okay. <laughs> um, in public. Yeah, exactly. The my the whole pur purpose of my talk was not to teach you how to use debugging tools. It was like if you get stuck, where do you go? What what was my methodology and my thought process for how to fix this issue? But if you don't know the debugging tools, there are a bajillion online uh, resources for that. There's um, the uh, there's a blog post that just got a uh, blog post and a video that just came out recently that Dries tweeted about uh, D8 debugging techniques. There are a whole ton of videos on the Drupal Association YouTube channel on debugging, and there's Drupal.org documentation for all kinds of debugging stuff. Uh, all these links will be available in the slides, so you can click on them for reals. And uh, this is the link where they will eventually be at. Uh, are there any questions? No? Y'all are ready to fix some stuff, write some patches? I'll follow we show you against your slides. Yeah, go for it. Go back. <laughs> no, not that. You still documentation. Documentation. Hey. <laughs> that, it could be a thing. <laughs> yeah, we have lots of stuff. Yeah, yeah, let's uh why don't we just do a mass review by the community right now and everybody that's willing to jump on in there and get the plus one. Totally. I mean why not? Dude? Let's do it and let's tag it with Texas Cam too. Well, yeah. that would <laughs> All right. Force it in there, dude. We'll have to really like the internet, though. Yep. I have a question, Ryan. Yep. So, like, I think you have to pick maybe a superior knowledge in how to not go down rabbit holes when you were yes. deciding. Like, you were making the decision between is it jQuery or is it Ajax or is it, like, trip module itself? Like, I'm sure you didn't just hit it immediately on, I mean, maybe you did, maybe you're awesome, and you immediately were like, oh, it's clearly this. But what if we did go down a couple rabbit holes? How far would you suggest following that, you know, maybe jQuery issues or modules down that rabbit hole before you're like, okay, it's clearly not going to be this. What's your end point to give up? Try another approach. Yeah. I feel like debugging often is just like taking stabs in the dark sometimes or maybe educated guesses. 
but how, how do we like increase the likelihood or success of a path that we take for debugging? Yeah, so that's why I like to do like multiple searches. So we we looked in the code, we did like a cursory search for the UI dialog stuff. Uh, we could have like gone way more further into that. There was a whole bunch of Drupal core code that was referencing UI dialog. We could have looked into all that first, but I didn't see anything immediately that was like, oh, that's probably it for sure. That's why I decided to search again, like let's look for something else we can maybe search for. Right, you don't have to do, you don't have to go deep immediately. You can say, well, here's all the results for this, and let's just keep that as notes. Here's the things for this. So I would suggest a broad search first, and then pick what would like most likely be your potential good shot there. You're gonna hit rabbit holes like that. You know, I uh, I didn't know anything about how Drupal 8 did the modal stuff um, at all. Potentially. It could have been a huge issue, like reading all the Drupal core code, all that kind of stuff. That's just yeah, kind so of. Yeah, I got lucky on the open modal dialog that PHP files and stuff. Yeah, you know, it, it. I was lucky that they hard coded the Drupal dash modal essentially, right? right. It, that that was the key that linked everything together essentially, and it shows up in the HTML, shows up in the code. Yeah. You see, it, it's the immediate link. You don't have to search through a million lines of code. Yeah. That isn't always going to happen. For sure, yeah. What's the last one? It's right here. WP five H ML lowercase G four six three. What's your issue call? Inline edit form breaks with CK editor. Yep. Got it. Node 278.72.6. Oh, yeah, the CK isn't true. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so here's my issue. Uh, we, we just looked at this, so I assume. Good question. So here, you know, we saw there could be multiple non-modals. So I assumed that there could that means there could only be one modal. That's why I did a search for the uh, modal commands, right? Like I I know that modals are a thing, and I now think I know that there can only be one modal at a time. But at this point, I still didn't know like how are modals actually made. Like, where do they come from? Is that a Drupal thing? I know it's a jQuery UI thing, but who, who does the modal stuff? So that's why I did the search, and that's why I looked at the code for the actual class called open modal dialog command, right? And I see that it extends open dialog command, which means in my module, I can use either. I can either do open dialog commands or open modal dialog commands. If you read the code for the open dialog command, then it tells you, you know, the first parameter is the like uh, ID or the name of your dialog command. And if you have different ones, then there could be multiple. So for this specific instance, I can see that Drupal Core does support multiple dialog commands because it, they have a class for it, right? And we're not breaking core by changing the file entity module to use dialog commands instead of modals. But it could have been that maybe Drupal Core didn't have an open dialog command, right? Maybe they only had open modal dialog. And there was no other way to have multiple 
moles at one time. In which case, I would agree that that's a Drupal core bug, right? Like you're not providing me the ability to do the things that I need, my, my module needs, I would potentially say, well, that needs to be fixed in Drupal core. But I didn't know at the time if it was core until I read the code. But once you read the code, you see it supports both options. Yeah, there's a difference between modals and dialogues. If you look at the modal API, it's actually pretty easy to use Drupal's modal API. What you're basically doing is there's certain attributes that you're setting, and one of the attributes that you do set, and I forget the, the name of the argument, but you, one of the things you actually pass it is whether it's a data dialogue type, I think is what it's called, or a data modal type or something like that. So that's another way that you could actually be able to allay your concerns is that if you look at this and you recognize like, oh yeah, right, there's a modal and there's a dialogue. Because I remember I had the same question I looked at, I was like, well, what's the difference? And if I recall correctly, the difference is exactly that. You can have a bunch of dialogues actually on your page at the same time and go between the two of them, but when you call it, you can do the exact same thing in a dialogue as you can in a modal, but when you call it a modal, that's what kind of kills all the rest of everything. That's really the only difference between the two things. So if you were concerned about it, you could dig a little bit deeper into Drupal's modal API and you'd actually be able to see the way that you use it to get a little more comfort about like, oh, okay, right, I can kind of see this is this is the design of, of you know of, of why this is working the way it is and how I would get it to work the way that I want and I'm sure shouldn't be breaking anything else because of it. Yeah, and it it's more obvious in my mind because they hard code right here in the open modal dialog command, they hard code what it's called. It's called town Drupal dash modal, and it's always called that, and it can never be called anything else. You know, so that's like, oh, that's that's why there's only one, because it's always called the same thing, because they hard coded it. Yeah. My understanding of a modal dialogue box is when you're when you're adding content to the to the dialogue, so you put put somewhere outside, uh -huh. and, you don't, and you don't confirm. Yep. It'll lock you into that dialog box, so it's expecting you to only get a response from right. the dialog box before you can continue. Yeah. So maybe that's why they hard code it as only one because you can only have one modal instance at yes. a time. Yes. Right. In, con in concept. So, so somewhere in core, somebody decided that we need a dialog that has specific properties. One of those is there can only be one. You shouldn't be able to like cancel out of it. You shouldn't be able to move it. It should gray out everything else on the page, right? But we also still want to have regular dialogues. You can have multiple, they can move, you can cancel out of them, right? Somewhere in core, both of these requirements existed. And so that's why they both exist as possibilities. I, it's, it's a naming thing, right? One of the three hard problems of computer science is naming. Like jQuery UI, it uses jQuery UI to actually make these models, but jQuery UI doesn't call them models. It, you know, Drupal calls them models, and Drupal calls them dialogues. So it's a naming, if you're coming from another system or from another technology, you probably would call them pop-ups, right? So this is one of those Drupal things where you just have kind of, now we have all learned what the modal specifically means with Drupal and what a dialogue means with Drupal. So from now on, that's not a problem, but for everybody else, um, I would just, I, I guess for me, if I was reviewing this, my one feedback would be, okay, you fixed the bug, great. Um, do we need a test written to verify that this doesn't get broken in the future? Excellent question. I don't know the answer to that. If it was Drupal core, the answer would be yes, for sure. Drupal core requires tests. Does the file entity require tests? But Bottom. even if it doesn't read, Wire it, mm -hmm. you could still write one in yeah. your patch and help make it better. This is true. Uh, that would be my fee my one feedback. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yes. Does so the problem is that there is two modals open and one doesn't work, right? Uh, Actually, there are two open. The, the problem is that there can only be one, there can only ever be one modal. So one is clobbering? That's so, so, so right there, that's a modal, that's, right? That's the modal. And then there's a modal on top of that. Not on top. When you click this, 
yeah. you're saying open the modal with the CK editor stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So okay. There can only be one modal. So it gets rid of the file entity modal. It's gone yeah. forever. Okay, so we have to name it something different. Yes. Alright. To have it to. It has to be a dialogue. Yep. And what's that patch number six? His argument is to use a different name. Yes, so we can see the other patch of this issue was he changed it so that instead so of calling hard, it, hard, hard coding it, he's still hard coding one, right? But his is called file entity dialogue. It will no longer clash with CK editor. Correct. But, but it's still a non Drupal, it's still a red flag because we're hard coding. Right. So if your file has a field that's a file, you can't edit the fields on the second file, right? Because you'll hit edit on the first one, that's a modal. It's called file entity dialog. If you hit edit on the file in that, it will close the first modal because it's got the same name, file entity dialog. Right, so here, even though it fixes the CK, uh, CK editor bug, it still clashes against other file entity modals. Yeah. So, what do you think about the introduction of the uh, configuration for modal into true as well? On the same line, you changed the name, but you also added the modal flag that's not in your watch. Yeah. 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 Mm. Yep. So, I, I, I don't think it should be a modal at all. But, yeah, it's no, I, I, opinion. It should be a few. Uh, it should be a. RTBC on it. RTBC? Refresh. I refresh. Yeah. Cool. Look good to me, man. Okay. Yeah. I watched, I watched the entire presentation <laughs> on it, but more than one on a code review, bro. Yeah, right? <laughs> you know? Yeah. This is all. Awesome. And that's the community. That's the Drupal community. Yeah, it is, man. Yeah. Dude. Cool. Any other questions, comments? It, it's certainly good enough yeah. to move forward. Yeah. Do we all need to do a comment on it? Like it blow up this guy's inbox? Yeah. Let's just nail it. Yeah. 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 If the bug was like deeper, say, like in the PHP, like a service class or something, mm -hmm. um, what tools are there, if any, for like debugging through that? Um, yeah, so, PHP, so. like I mentioned, uh, I use PHP Storm. Uh, it has uh, step debugging, it's got a debugger built into it, so you can look in your code and you can say, I want a breakpoint right here. You know, pause me, inspect the entire environment, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's built, it uses PHP's xDebug. There are a lot of tutorials on how to use that specifically. Um, I didn't need to use that for this, so I didn't really go over that, yeah. Yes? Uh, do you have any recommendations, for example, like two things that I see kind of difficult one, working with the form API, so the other day I was trying to debug something in the form API, and I was just debugging, and I spent like three to four hours like going through the workflow, seeing what changes, like form alters and widgets alters and things like that. So I know it's a big thing, like of code, but how to go about with that? And the other big piece that sometimes get me confusing, confused, is that when, you know, in OOP, you have a lot of interfaces, classes, and inheritance, and, you know, your five level deep in and inheritance chain, like, how do you know what is modifying or producing something, like, in those cases, like, any good practice or recommendation? Yeah, so, I, if you know where in the code, like, yeah, you, you're in this class that's five levels deep, you're trying to figure out what the problem is, but you know it's in this class. Then the uh, step debugging with PHP Storm or uh, you know other IDEs that do step debugging helps you out a lot. So you can pause on the line and you can see your entire environment. So you can see like your whole stack trace. You can see, well, before I hit this method, I called this class and this method, and these were the variables that it was passed. And you can follow the execution flow exactly how it happened, one line at a time, in real time, if you want. And then, you know, if you, if you see, oh, I think I need to go check out something up here in this other class, you can just set another breakpoint and it will stop you in that class. So for the deep, like PHP level, stuff like that, the step debugging is invaluable. Um, helps a lot. You can get away with, you know, just like a print statement and a die, but, 
it's it's not as expressive and it's not as rich as the stuff code also by the way you don't have to pay for like VS code has a really good PHP debugger package that yes. has awesome stuff debugging. I have PHP Storm and I really don't use it. I, yeah, I mean, Vim can do PHP stuff, but I like it. There's yeah, but any, what was that one yeah. called? VS Code. VS Code. So you can do oh. inline debugging, right? Like, so yeah. you, uh, you don't need to. PS Code? Yeah. PS Code. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. there's a plugin for uh, our package for Adam as well. That works just fine. Mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome. Cool. Anything else? Cool, thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. Go back to your uh, seminar. You guys are saying that you're going to get RTBC on it. Yep. Keep going, keep it going, Dave. We reviewed 27 people. Right? We get more comments. We reviewed this, it's good, let's go. Cool, that's it. Have a good uh, rest of the camp.